Imagine that it is your first day of school. You know, you're walking around, meeting your friends again, asking how their summer was, and then suddenly, the most beautiful, most gorgeous, handsome, or whatever person walks into the room. And you're like, who is that? But then you realize that that person is that weird, ugly kid from last year. And then you're like, oh my goodness, that person had a major summer glow. Now, I've personally never experienced this myself, and that's mainly because I want to be the person to have a summer glow. So I devised a five category plan that targeted every single aspect of me, starting off with the first category, acne. Now this little summer globe was actually planned all the way back in April 2024. At that time, I saw a lot of videos of dudes glowing up and I was like, damn, I want to glow up too. So the first thing I thought that I could fix about myself is my acne. My acne is probably my biggest insecurity I have. I knew I had to clean up my acne somehow because I want a glass skin. I mean, wouldn't everyone want glass skin? There are many factors to getting clear skin. You gotta eat right, try not to have too much oily stuff, drink lots of water, you know, stay hydrated, and maybe do some skincare. In typical Tyler Tran fashion, I go crazy on researching everything I need to know about skincare. And I found something very interesting, Korean skincare. Now this intrigued me a lot because I noticed that Koreans have really, really, really clear skin. So after researching, I found a five-step skincare routine that I could follow. The first thing you want to do in this routine is double cleansing. You first want to use oil cleanser as your first product. After that, you use a foam cleanser. Once you're done with the foam cleanser, you add toner. After toner, you add the serum. And then after serum, you add the moisturizer. Now you can add masks and stuff in between those routines only on certain days of the week though. So when you're doing acne, you want to get the right products that are right for your skin and by right for your skin i mean like right for your skin type now my skin type is more of like an oily skin type some people could have dry skin some people could have a combination skin of dry and oily after tons of research for products for oily skin i finally made a purchase at yes style now i love yes style i'm not sponsored yet i buy everything at yes style everything's so cheap it does take two to three weeks for your items to come but to be honest i don't really mind that because the prices are freaking insane so i do have a tiktok of me doing korean skin skincare for the first time. In the first two months, my skin has been the happiest it's ever been. My skin was pretty clear at those times and it was so soft. So to me, it felt like it was working. So there we have it with acne. Now we are moving on to category two, which is my body. Looking in the mirror every day before I shower, I noticed that I was a bit skinny and a lot of people bully me for being short and skinny. So in my mind, I thought, all right, so if I can't grow taller, I just gotta grow wider. So I bought a gym membership. I started going out to the gym at least three to four times a week on a full body split. I don't even think you can call it a split if it's a full body, but whatever, you guys get the point. I basically just hit every single muscle group in my body in one day. Now, obviously when you're going to the gym, it's not only, you know, working out, doing all those curls that makes your body bigger. Another factor to making your body look better is your diet. Now I used to eat fast food meals literally every single day, probably. And I was like, yeah, this is very unhealthy. I need to start cooking my own food. So in typical Tyler Tran fashion, you know, I researched a way into nutrition. I saw how much carbs, protein, and fats I need. I saw how much water I needed to drink a day. And I tried the diet. The diet consists of four meals a day with breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. My snack would just be protein ice cream. The protein I use is from Rise. I got the Jet Puff one, which is like the marshmallow one. I got the peanut butter one. And I got like the chocolate cookie one, whatever it is. I basically just blend a bunch of ingredients. I'll put it in my Ninja a blender and boom turns into ice cream it was a pretty good investment at the time i say at the time because uh this diet did not last it was going well for the first two months and then after the third month all the food started getting so bland here's the list of my meal plan um yeah it's it's not that great it was just too repetitive and also the food was not even good like i'm a terrible cook i mean i wanted to get fat in a clean way you know like clean bulking but as of right now i think i'm just gonna go dirty bulking to be honest i will keep continuing to go to the gym now without a way we are on to cat category 3, which is my fashion. For my entire life, I feel like I've been dressing like a bum. Like I was such an Under Armour kid. That's all I had in my wardrobe was just Under Armour shirts, Under Armour shorts, Under Armour sweatshirts, everything Under Armour, Under Armour pants. The way you dress really shows your personality. Being an Under Armour kid, you just look like a kid. Especially at my height, everyone will think you're a kid. So I thought that I should probably start dressing my age or even dressing older than my age. Like I said in the past two categories, research, research, research again until I found my style. Now my style is going to be more of just like East Asian style. As you can see, I have this kimono cardigan. I got some cargo pants. You guys can't really see that. I'll put a fit chat picker. 
Oh my god, that's a tongue twister. I'll put a fit check picture on the screen now so that you guys know what I'm wearing. But yeah, this is more like Japanese style. Took a lot of scrolling on Pinterest for this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are certain brands that I like to buy from, like Uniqlo. If I want to get to more of the expensive side, I go to Abercrombie and Fitch. If I want something at Abercrombie, but it's too expensive, I just go to H&M or ASOS. Those are my main brands that I shop at, but I will literally shop everywhere. I have some stuff in my closet that are like from Kelvin Klein or something. I would shop at any brand. I'm not really picky about what brand I wear. Another part of my fashion is jewelry. Now, I used to never wear jewelry, but I thought since I'm having kind of like a style change, I might as well add some jewelry. I bought necklaces, I bought rings, I bought bracelets, I bought new glasses. I actually have three pairs of these in three different colors. This one's silver. I do have a gold one and a black one. I change from time to time depending on my aesthetic. This is actually my favorite necklace. This is a kanji pendant. In Japanese, this is I, which means love, I believe. Pretty cool. I bought this from uh, Kyo Studios. All the jewelry that I have on my hands, like my rings and my bracelets, all come from a place called Vitaly. My inverted spear of heaven necklace came from Nani America, I think. I don't have any watches. I bought all my glasses from Glasses USA. Pretty dope place to buy glasses. You just give them your prescription, and boom, you got the perfect glasses. These are, I believe, the Otodo Waterloos. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. I had to do so much extra stuff, like figuring out my ring size, my wrist size, and figuring out what my face shape was, you know, so that I could pick the perfect glasses for my face. I used to wear these old Oakley glasses that did not really fit my face at all. And those Oakley glasses were like 200 bucks. The three pairs of glasses I got were only like 180. Glasses USA. If you guys want to sponsor me, you know where my email is at. <laughs> I'm so weird, bro. Now that we're done talking about fashion, it is time to move to category four, which is my hair. Now, my entire life, I've always had that straight Asian hair that is so annoying. I've had many hairstyles in the past, from like a short hairstyle that is like almost a buzz cut, to a comb over where I put like a gallon of hairspray in my hair, to the point where my hair literally becomes cement. In eighth grade, I was known as that kid who put way too much hairspray in my hair. During that year, on the last week of school, I decided not to do my hair at all, and everyone kept talking about it. They were like, oh my gosh, do you see Tyler's hair? It looks so much better with it down. And then once I got to ninth and tenth grade, I started trying to do a middle part, but the middle part never really looked that good. So I looked into hair and I found out about perms, specifically Korean perms. The hairstyle that I wanted was a two block middle part perm. So I made a call to my local salon. I had them do the perm and I gotta say, I wasn't too satisfied with the end results. I felt like they cut too much of my back and my sides because while they were trying to add the, the rods in my hair, the person told me that the rods keep slipping off the side of my hair. Like my sides were not long enough to be permed. That's why this side is a bit more straighter than and the front. I waited months for this. I grew my hair out as long as I can to make sure that it was long enough to be permed. And during the haircut, she cut most of it off. So then my sides didn't even get permed. And then at the end of the haircut, it looked like I had more of like, I don't know, a fringe. I paid $240 for that too. That is absolutely wild. I'm not gonna go to that place ever again. Instead, I'm just gonna go to my cousin's aunt. I think it's his aunt who does hair. I'm gonna go with her instead because first off, this is not racist in any way, but she's Asian. The one who was cutting my hair for this perm was a white lady. Through a culture perspective, white people don't really know how to cut Asian hair. So that's why in my next haircut, I'm going to go to an Asian barber that knows how to handle Asian hair and have her cut it instead. Like I said, it's not a racist statement or anything. It's more of just a cultural statement. I'm not trying to get canceled by Twitter, but I still think my perm looks nice. It's holding up well. How I maintain it is I use shampoo and conditioner. Now I used to be, you know, a heads and shoulders guy, but now I switch to curling shampoo and curling conditioner, specifically from the Tresemme brand. You know, I just put the shampoo on, scrub, scrub, scrub get it out. After that, I put my conditioner in. Once I got my conditioner in, I'm also adding body wash. I use this very nice Aveeno body wash. Scrub all over my body with a loofah and a back scrubber. Once I'm done with that, my conditioner is still in my hair, so I just wash that off and boom, I'm done. I either do this after the shower or wait to the next day after I wake up. Normally, I just wait until the next day. Every morning, I use a spray bottle and I spray water in my hair until it's damp. I don't know what specific products I use for my hair in the morning, but I start off with the curling cream. After getting a small amount of curling cream on my my hands. I just rub it into my hands and then massage it into my hair. After that, I wash my hands, dry them off nicely, and then I use a styling gel. I do the exact same thing, you know, put a little dot on my hand, rub it, and then massage it into my hair. If my hair is still not voluminous enough, I use this little spike glue. Sometimes I put hairspray in the end, you know, a light coat of hairspray just to, you know, lock it in. But yeah, that's everything about my hair. Now we're going on to category five, which is my mental health.
The real reason why I'm doing all of this is because I hate myself. I thought I could like myself again if I could take all the bad parts of me and fix them. My acne made my face look ugly, so I tried to clear it up. My body looked disgusting, so I tried working out. My clothes made me look like a kid, so I tried dressing my age. My hair made me look unattractive, so I tried many different hairstyles until I found the one that suited me. All of this just so that I can feel good about myself. I thought that if I can make myself look good, I would feel different, that I would be different. But I'm still the same person. My personality hasn't changed. I might have found a way to stop giving myself reasons to hate myself. But I hate who I am. I hate how anxious I get when people talk to me. I hate how I can't even look at people in the eye. I hate how bad I am at talking to people. I hate how easily I bore people. I hate how I can't connect with people. I hate the way I talk. I hate my voice. I hate how I'm too scared of being myself. I could go on for days about how much I hate myself because it's easier for me to find things I hate about myself than to find things I like about myself. I wish I could be a fun person to be around, but I'm not. That's why I don't have many friends. And even the friends I do have, I personally don't think they really like me. I don't know why I always have a feeling of being stabbed in the back. Maybe it's because I think I deserve it, so I'm just waiting for it to happen. There is a part of me that hopes everything goes well. That I'm able to become the person I want to be. That I'll finally be able to live with myself. But I know that day won't come anytime soon. I just hope I can stay strong and get through the school year. I believe I can. Summer is over, school is starting, and all of a sudden, I got acne breakouts. I don't know what happened, but I got one of the worst breakouts I've ever had in my life. My skin has never been worse. Look at my skin now. Jesus Christ. I don't know how this happened. Two weeks from now, I'm going to be visiting a dermatologist to see how I can fix this because this is just outrageous. So this is the fit. You know, I'm going to be wearing my uh, glasses. I just got these, so that's pretty cool. Got this Fushiguro Toji necklace, uh, Abercrombie. And more Abercrombie iced out. I think I'm too iced out, but you know, I like to wear jewelry now. I'm probably gonna be wearing white shoes, so that's why I have white socks on. That's the fit. So if people make fun of me, then it's all good. <laughs> I'm not doing this for them, I'm doing this for me. I walked into my first period, which was pre-calculus. One of my friends was in the classroom at the time, and he told me that I looked different, and the teacher agreed with him. In my fourth period, I had AP Psychology. One of my friends told me that I had a massive glow up, so mission success. In my study hall, one of the seniors that knew me was asking who I was, until he looked at my face closely, and he saw that it was me. He was like, wow, you look... You look good, man. I was like nonchalantly. I was like, 
yeah thank you man everyone really thought that i was a foreign exchange student because of how different i looked and how different i dressed and i think i'm satisfied with the reaction that i got it literally took me like three to four months to turn from what i was before to turn to who i am now and i think i'm pretty satisfied with the end results even though this is not necessarily the full version of the me that i want to be but i feel like i am getting there and uh just gotta, just gotta keep going, you know? But there you go. That was my glow up journey. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.